Hello everyone. Welcome to the YouTube channel of Legal Darshan. In today's video, we are going to discuss some relevant questions for constitution. We will be bringing up more such questionnaire series for your entrance examination preparation. If you are attempting any LLB entrance exam like DU LLB, PU LLB, BHU LLB or any such entrance exam which um, demands constitution to be a part of it and even if there is some other exams like BA entrances, B BGMC entrances which require polity to be a part of it, this particular video is going to be useful for you. In today's video, we will be covering 10 questions. Rather, we will say there will be 10 topics because we will also be covering the background of these 10 questions so that if questions resembling to the similar topic appears in the exam, you will be able to handle it. Now, moving on to our question number one. Question number one is, what was the exact constitutional position of the Indian Republic when the constitution was brought into force with effect from 26th January 1950. So on 26th January 1950, everybody knows that India became a republic country. All right, we celebrate our republic day on 26th January. So uh, our constitution was enacted and we had a preamble in the constitution. So before this date, like on uh, before 26th January 1950, India was a sovereign democratic republic after the amendment made in 42nd amendment act india became a sovereign a sovereign secular socialist democratic republic preamble jo hai hamara so the preamble of the constitution wo first time 42nd amendment se amend kiya gaya tha usse pehle jo india ka republican status tha it was a sovereign democratic republic Secular or socialist words, jo the, these two words in, in the uh, status of Indian, uh, Indian constitution, they were added by 72nd amendment. So whenever you get a question that initially when the constitution was enacted, jab constitution picture mein laya gaya, 26 January 1950, when the constitution was adopted, the constitutional position kya thi India ki? So India was a sovereign democratic republic all right it was a sovereign democratic republic so this b answer is correct right moving on to question number two now here we covered in the first question we covered two questions the first question is what was the status when the constitution was brought in effect from 26 january 1950 it was sovereign democratic republic another question is when did it when did it get amended it get amended in for, by 42nd amendment, right? And what words were added? Two words were added, secular and socialist in the Indian Republican position of the country. All right, moving on to question number two. Question number two asks, separation of the judiciary from the executive has been provided in one of the following parts of the Indian constitution. Now the question is relating to the parts. How many parts do we have in Indian constitution? The answer, if we ask the first question, how many parts are there in Indian constitution? So there are 22 parts in Indian constitution. Or kiss part may, in which part we have been provided that judiciary should be separated from executive. So that has been provided under directive principle of state policy which we often called dpsp and this is and this particular uh this particular part is part four of the indian constitution so either you will be getting an option dpsp or you will be getting an option part number so part four is the is the dpsp of indian constitution right now what is the article what is the, the uh, when in DU LLB, article is oftenly asked for separation of judiciary from executive. So the article number is 50. All right. It is article 50, which talks about separation of judiciary from executive. So directive principle of state policy is the answer in this particular question. Moving on to next question. Question number three. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री आस्ट विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड ऑलवेज लुक फॉर दिस वर्ड वाइल अटेम्प्टिंग योर एग्जाम which of the following is not included as a fundamental right in the indian constitution right in me se kaun sa aisa adhikar hai jo fundamental rights mein jo mool adhikar mein included nahi hai right so the first is right to freedom of speech we all know that it has been contained in article 19 so it is a fundamental right right to equality before law every person every citizen of this country be it the prime minister or be it a local vegetable vendor he is equal in the eye of law so this is also a fundamental right right to constitutional remedies this is article 32 and it has been given the status of heart and soul of constitution by dr bhim rao ambedkar so these three these three are the fundamental rights these three are the fundamental rights contained in part 3 of the constitution now what is not an what is not the fundamental right the answer is the d part right to equal wages for equal work equal work ka right hai uh, equal wages ka right hai har us person ko jo kisi aur ke equal work kar raha hai basically this d part is nothing but a directive principle of state policy right part 4 mein we have directive principle of state policy which says ki men and women who are working equally they should be awarded equal wages because we know that often women uh, are marginalized when it comes to the income and wages so this d part is dpsp directive principle of state policy and is the right answer for question number 3 all right moving on to next question that is question number 4 the term secular now this is the question we handled in uh, the first question itself that term secular was added in the preamble to the indian constitution by of course we know 42nd amendment right also you must be knowing that when it comes to the amendment of preamble preamble has only been amended one time and that was by this 42nd amendment act of 1976 right so in in 42nd amendment act four words were added in preamble and the four words were secular socialist and integrity and integrity is third and fourth word okay in the last paragraph of the preamble the word the words and integrity were added with the word unity unity and integrity of the nation prior to 42nd amendment it was only unity of the nation now this word is unity and integrity of the nation all right i hope this question is clear to you now moving on to question number 5 the chapter on fundamental duties includes now this question is about fundamental duties when the constitution give rights to us when we are uh, conferred some rights called fundamental rights and also directive principles of state policy the constitution the constitution makers also wants the citizens to perform some duties right so what are those duties the uh, and uh, what is inclusive in those duties is what is what this question is demanding now the first part is duty to cherish and follow the noble ideals which inspired our freedom movement so this is one of the fundamental duties that we should be respectful towards the noble ideals who inspired our freedom movement basically we should be uh, dutiful and we should be respectful towards those people who helped us get the freedom so this is a dp uh, this is a fundamental duty right uh, this is our duty as a citizen it's our duty to respect our freedom fighters duty to vote in general elections so we have to vote in general elections duty to promote the sense of fraternity among the people now we should be uh, we should be the one to promote the fraternity fraternity means bhai chara ekta right so uh, we should be Uh, increasing the brotherhood in our society this is our fundamental duty now there are two uh, problems uh, two parts in this question the b part and the d part both are the right answer because uh, the, although we have a duty to vote in general election but it has not been contained in the fundamental duties right so the option uh, can be b but the more suitable option in this question is this duty to stick to the political party 
on whose ticket one contested election because this is not a fundamental duty at all as a citizen it is our duty to vote in elections but however it is not mentioned in uh, the fundamental duties but the duty to stick entirely to one party uh, on whose ticket we contested election that is not at all a fundamental duty so the more suitable option between b and d is going to be d right d is also not the uh, fundamental duty included in part 4a but since it is the duty of citizen and uh, there is no duty on any person to stick to one political party so d will be the most appropriate answer in this context right moving on to question number 6 how many type of how many type of writs can be issued by the supreme court all right so supreme court under article 32 issues the writs how many type of writs there are five type of writs one is habeas corpus second is mandamus third is prohibition fourth is certiorari and fifth is quo warranto so these five writs are different when it comes to performing functions and writ can be issued to any authority any governmental body any judicial body any quasi judicial body any administrative body when the fundamental right of a citizen is encroached upon in article 32 so article 32 has been referred to as why it is referred to as heart and soul of constitution this is the reason because it allows the supreme court to issue it and enforce the fundamental rights of the citizens of the of the persons whose fundamental rights have been encroached upon by any governmental authority all right so um moving on to next question question number 7 question number 7th is a secular state is one which has no religion of its own which is irreligious which is anti religious which takes into consideration the religious sentiments of people so secular means dharm nirpekshata right we no biasness to towards any religion so india is has no religion of its own india ka apna koi religion nahi hai india is a multicultural multi religious country in which a lot of religions are there all right we have uh, hinduism we have sikhism we have jainism buddhism we have islam we have christianity we have jewism we have parsi parsis in our country right so india is a secular state india is a uh, dharm nirpeksh country dharm nirpekshta hai india mein because india ka apna koi religion nahi hai and it respects all the people who are following their own religion religion se related hamare paas article 25 bhi hai ki har citizen india ka jo hai he is free to follow and propagate his faith or religion right so secular state ka matlab hai aisi country ऐसा देश जिसका अपना कोई रिलीजन नहीं है सम कंट्रीज आर रिलीजन बेस्ड लाइक देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ इस्लामिक कंट्रीज विच आर ओनली फॉर विच हैज विच यू नो दे शो शो आउट दैट देयर रिलीजन इज इस्लाम बट दैट्स नॉट द केस विद इंडिया इंडिया इज टोटली अ सेक्युलर स्टेट which means it has no religion okay now uh, this question in this question if it appears people can be confused in a or d all right because b and c is totally irrelevant so in india there is secular state ka matlab sirf itna hai ki desh ka apna koi religion nahi hai ab it takes into consideration the religious sentiments that is a separate thing but that does not define the definition of secularism so whenever you will be asked to take mark the meaning of secular state always remember to mark uh, that a secular state is one which has no religion of its own so that is why a is the right answer moving on to question number 8 question number 8 says what is the status of right to property now right to property prior to the 44th amendment act note down the amendment number prior to 44th amendment 44th amendment act in constitution right to property was a fundamental right but now after 44th amendment act of 1978 right to property was deleted from fundamental rights and it has been shifted from fundamental rights to article 300a now article 300a is a 
is the right to property all right so that is why because right to property has been taken out from fundamental right and inserted in some uh, part of other constitution it is no more a fundamental right but rather it is a legal right or if the option comes if if the option is legal right you have to take legal right or if the question comes that what is the status of right to property and the option is constitutional right then you can also take it because it has not been contained in part 3 now but rather it is in the constitution so it also becomes the legal right because it is in constitution as well as the constitutional right so both the options are correct and mark my words that when there will be legal right in the option constitutional right won't be there because in that case two options will be correct it is not a human right fundamental right we came to know that it got deleted from 44th amendment act and it is not a natural right so and right to property is a legal right or a constitutional right in our country right moving on to question number 9 question number 9th is which case is related to fundamental rights so the right answer is golaknath versus state of punjab 1967 in this case the question was whether parliament can amend fundamental rights or not 1951 to 1973 1951 was the case of shankari prasad and in 1973 it was the case of keshwanand bharati versus state of kerala there was a chain of cases a lot of cases were there a lot of incidents were there which only talked about the amendment power of constitution of a parliament pardon that to what extent the parliament can exercise its amendment power under article 368 so in this case of golaknath it was held by the court that parliament has the power to amend fundamental rights later on in the judgment of keshwanand bharati versus union uh, versus state of kerala this judgment of golaknath was reversed down and parliament uh, and uh, the supreme court held that parliament can only amend constitution without encroaching upon the basic structure doctrine so the fundamental rights form the part of basic structure doctrine and hence they cannot be amended by the parliament even when it has been conferred upon the amending powers under article 368 so whenever it comes to the case related to fundamental rights and you have golaknath versus state of punjab in the option you can take this option just by seeing it you do not need to apply extra mind for it right moving on to the last question of this series question number 10 what which of the following authorities are competent to issue writs for the enforcement of fundamental rights fundamental rights can be enforced by the mode of writs and these writs can be issued both by supreme court and high court supreme court issues the writs under article 32 and high court issue the writs under article 226 but remember only for the enforcement of fundamental rights so if your fundamental rights are encroached upon you can either go to high court court and you can also go to supreme court so under article 32 supreme court will be the option and under article 226 high court is going to be the option so that is it to for today's video i hope you got clear with the concepts we discussed today for more such videos stay tuned with us on our channel legal darshan thank you and all the very best for your exams